I'm John Wilker, the organizer of 360 Edit. I hope you enjoy this session recording, but first I wanted to mention one thing. We've served the community since 2009, and over the past few years we've had to take on debt in an effort to keep the conference alive. After several unforeseen challenges, not the least of which is a pandemic of indefinite duration, we've had to make the hard choice to end the conference as we're now facing over $100,000 in debt. As a result of requests from the community of how they can help, we've created a GoFundMe campaign. If you're inclined and able, please consider donating to help keep 360 iDev going. The QR code after this will link you to the campaign. Thank you. Enjoy the recording. Uh, thank you all for coming today. We're going to talk about app clips. My name is John Bauer. I work at a company called Nametag. We are building a privacy-centric identity platform that allows people to control access to their own personal data. I have spent the better part of the last year uh, leaning into app clips and making them an uh, integral part of our product. I'll show you an example a little later. We make a few different products. But my goal today is to demystify, inform, and inspire you to not only know what it takes to build an app clip, but hopefully you'll be inspired to go and find your own use case and how that works in your own app. I think they're really incredible, and uh, hopefully you do too after this. Does anyone recognize this? This is probably not just mine, but probably all of ours home screen, right? This is the pager at the bottom of your home screen. Uh, many of us who have been iOS users, not just developers for a long time, have certainly accumulated uh, more apps than we probably would like to admit. And I think we're all, ex uh, we all have a bit of download fatigue. I certainly scroll through these and don't recognize half of them. I don't know why I downloaded them, when I downloaded them, if I've ever opened them, maybe I had to open them once. Uh, some of these things would be like apps for hotels, apps for restaurants, apps that I needed for one interaction and never came back to, and it's a little insane. Now we have an app graveyard slash app library at the end of the screen, but uh, most of those I never use. And if you feel this way, we're not alone. It's actually incredibly hard to get someone to actually install your app. This chart in particular shows uh, what you call an install rate, which is the percentage of downloads that if someone sees your app on the App Store, not going to your app page, but if they see it in a search result or a recommendation or something like that, at the best case scenario, depends on the category, 10% of those people will actually download your app. And it just tanks from there. So it's actually really hard to get anyone to install your app. I broke this out by categories just to show you. These are the categories that uh, if you, you might see a real use for someone to temporarily download your app. Uh, shopping, utilities, food and drink, again, the coffee shop scenario where you need to pay, touchless ordering and payment. In food and drink, only 6.3% of people are actually going to download your app. So this can be difficult. I find myself thinking, do I really have to install your app? Whether it's a hotel or a rental car or something. So for this problem, app clips can definitely come to the rescue. And if you don't know much about app clips, that's fine. You're about to know way too much. I was talking with some people around the conference to ask what they knew about them, and uh, not a lot of people sort of knew too much about them. So I want to set the bar here, get us all on a level playing ground. And the good news is that app clips are pretty much exactly as they sound. Something like this. No, I lied. It's not exactly like they sound, thankfully. They're not that. But what are they? App clips in actuality are pure native app experiences without a visit to the App Store. They were introduced in iOS 14. They support multiple invocation methods. They are extremely powerful with very few restrictions, surprisingly. They disappear after 30 days. If you don't interact with it, it will just disappear off your device. You may not even know that it's on your device, really. 
Uh, and if you are looking for an Android equivalent, on Android, these are called instant apps. There are pros and cons to Apple versus Android and what they offer, but uh, I won't cover instant apps today, but if you're looking for an Android equivalent, it's there. App clips are very powerful with a few limitations. If you've ever looked into this, you may have been scared off. I'll start with the cons. Sort of the most publicly known con is that uh, it's a extremely limited app binary size that is acceptable for an app clip. You have to have this entire experience under 10 megabytes. In iOS 16, that's been raised to 15. If your current app is, I don't know, tens of megs, 50 megs, 100 megs, or something like that, you might immediately write off app clips. And I would ask that you reevaluate that and get creative, and I'll show you ways in which you can overcome that. There's no networking allowed while the app clip is in the background, but while it's in the foreground, you can do anything you want. There's a few awkward UX interactions, which I'll call out along the way, but it's okay. I think the biggest barrier to adoption is it's new terminology for users. So when you interact with a brand and they tell you, download our app clip, or don't have to download an app, use our app clip, people don't really know what that means yet. And so it's a little confusing for users. Hopefully that will get better over time. But now let's talk about the pros. You can access almost any Apple framework for free. What does that mean for free? Well, if you're using third-party libraries for everything you do, then you might have a problem with this. But if you can find an Apple framework equivalent for what you need to do, importing those symbols is not going to add to your binary size limit. So 10 megabytes is only the developer code that's added on top of that. If you can lean into Apple Frameworks, you'll get all that for free. Vision Kit, Apple Pay, the entire, you know, anything you think of. You've got access to hardware, surprisingly. So camera, biometrics, even the secure enclave, if you need to do that. You can do full networking while the clip is foregrounded. So um, anything in network framework, URL session. You can download assets after the initial load as well. So you could have a 10 megabyte initial load and then go download a core ML model or go download a game level or whatever you need to do after that. And then there's this really cool thing I'll show later, an app store overlay banner, uh, which offers the user the ability to actually download your parent app without going to the app store. You can do it right there in the banner in the app. One thing to note is I'm going to be using these terms interchangeable, interchangeably, parent and main app. If you think about your main app as the app that you're currently working on is in the store, an app clip is a child target of that. So when I refer to your parent app, it's really the main app, right? It just, in this context, it becomes the parent. Okay, let's see some examples. So we're all on the same page. I'm gonna move over to here. This one is called Spot Menu, and this is probably the most obvious case that you either may have run into or could sort of think of when you think of an app clip, and that is sort of touchless food ordering. After the pandemic, you just go to a QR code, and normally you would open up a menu. Uh, usually it's a PDF or on the web, and this is a native version, although this is very familiar, this flow, to everyone. So open up your camera, go to the QR code, it recognizes it, this little card comes up, that's called an app clip card, and now this is an app clip. Now, this looks very familiar to what you would see like linking out to the web, so they're not doing anything too mind-blowing here, but this is native, and they're just choosing to show a PDF reader in this case. Another sort of food ordering uh, implementation is a POS system called Toast. You may have seen this too. In this case, you get a receipt, a paper receipt, and you point your camera at the QR code, and you get a native checkout flow, which also, again, has payment options, uh, Apple Pay, they have their reward system all built in, they can do anything they want and make it look uh, really slick and native. A more complex example is what we're doing at NameTag. At NameTag, we're hoping that 
most new users to name tag will only ever need the the uh, sorry the app clip. And I'll show you this. Our goal is to authenticate a user using their ID. So one of our products is called Sign In with ID. And instead of using a password, you use your identification. It could be your driver's license. It could be a passport. Anything. I'll show you an example of that. And I'll talk to this example as it's happening. Oops, let me, I was trying to get the player to go away. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to test flight first here just to show you that name tag app is not installed. Okay. It says install. That means it's not on my phone at all. So I'm going to, what I want to do is log into a site called House Tonight. House Tonight is a website that, where you can rent houses ta -da, tonight. And all they need to know, really, they want you to log in, but all they really care about is that you are 21 plus, your age, okay? And so they don't want to keep any of your PII around on their server, so they are using secure sign-in with ID from name tag. Click the button to go log in, pops up the app clip card, pops up there, it's branded as house tonight. You open it up. This is the app clip powered by name tag. You get a native experience. This asks me, tells me I need to scan my ID and add a photo of myself. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna open up the scanner. I can use a state ID. I can use a passport. It's now looking for the ID. Notice there's no shutter button. So as I'm covering my ID there. Uh, as soon as I put my ID, it recognizes what it, now I'm gonna take a selfie. Because I work at NameTag, of course I already have an account, so it recognizes that I have an account. And now I'm verified, and I can click sign in. And now I'm signed in. I'll close the app clip, and just open up the camera just to show you the state of the website now. Now I'm actually logged into House Tonight. It says I'm over 21, and I'm logged in. And all House Tonight knows is that I'm over 21, and in this case, in this case, they got my avatar. But users can completely control what information they share with a brand. And all this is happening inside the app clip. If I do not interact with this app clip, it will just vanish off my phone over time. I never had to install the name tag app. I didn't have to go to the app store. And I accomplished my goal. Pretty cool stuff. That's just a couple examples. But let's look at what else we could do. It's really great for ephemeral brand interactions. Restaurant ordering, document scanning, as you just saw, feedback collection, in-moment e-commerce, location-specific tasks and promos, interactive ads, uh, Apple Maps placements, interesting stuff coming. Another big use case is third-party functionality. So if you have an app and you want to, you work with a partner and that partner experience needs, they want you to register on that app. You don't really want to send people to the app store to get your partner's app because you know they'll never come back. But if you can integrate an app clip and allow the partner's app to pop up in an app clip, that user can return right to your app. You don't, never take them to the app store. Great for third-party account creation and logins. And AR and VR, this is going to be very interesting, I think. Context-aware marketplaces and e-commerce and AR, Apple Maps integrations, that thing is going to be really big. Now I'm going to walk you through exactly how to build an app clip from a developer perspective. I'm also going to point out some gotchas along the way, save you some time. But there's four main steps to creating an app clip. Create the app clip target and Xcode, support associated domains, set up experiences, and handle universal links in code. Let's look at the app clip target. Go to, uh, go to Xcode, create a new target, app clip is a choice. Just pick that, easy. It's gonna ask you if you wanna activate the app clip scheme. Yes, you do. I'll show you why in a minute. That's really all you need to do. One note here is name, okay, so it's a new target. You're gonna name this target. In my example here, my parent app or my main app, the bundle ID is example. And so you're gonna to wanna to pick the bundle identifier for your clip, just add .clip to it. 
okay? Uh, this is just an example of how simple it is. This is, again, uh, bare bones project. I've now got my app clip example files at the top, and there's some test, uh, test folders, and then the app clip example clip below it. And it has, this is Swift UI, so it has its own main file, its own content view. You can go to town and build out your uh, experience just like you normally would with no other considerations. In this case, I'm just doing a hello world from the clip, nothing special. And anytime you wanna share files, images, assets, whatever, between your parent app and your app clip, just go ahead and set the target membership. It's as easy as that. So for instance, you might have a flow existing in your parent app that you want to expose in your app clip. You don't need to copy those files. Just share them as a target membership. Just remember that anything you share with your clip is going to count against your 10 megabyte or 15 megabyte limit. Now let's set up associated domains. Go into, select your clip target, go to signing capabilities, select associated domains, add this as an entitlement or a capability. And in the associated domains, if you've ever set up universal links, it's the same thing. You just need to add a new key. So in this case, you're going to add two entries, app clips, colon, and then your domain. In my case, my personal URL, govelop.org, I just created a subdomain. This is totally up to you, but it's app clips, colon, your domain and app links colon, and that handles the universal link. Then we need to add an Apple app site association file. Say that 10 times fast. I practiced that, I actually got it. This is a file, it's a JSON file, without a JSON extension, important, that you put on your domain, uh, on your website. You put it in a folder called .wellknown, and the file, again, with no .json, needs to be served as content type JSON. So you may need to fiddle with your uh, web server to do that. This is a super bare bones example of what that file looks like. Uh, there's two keys, app links and app clips. The app links in this case is the app ID, is the app, the bundle ID for your parent app, and the app clips is the bundle ID to your clip. The thing that's blacked out there is my team ID. So what you actually need to enter is team ID dot bundle ID, okay? This is bare bones. These files can get incredibly complex, but you can also get very creative with them. I'm just showing, there are so many ways to do this wrong. I'm showing you bare minimum to do it right. The star there just means that I'm gonna handle any, any universal link at this address. If you have problems with this, and you might, uh, there's a third party uh, validator here I'm linking to, Branch.io has one, and you can pass in your domain and it will spider out the web and look at this file and tell you uh, what it thinks is wrong with that. Now, let's go set up an app clip experience on App Store Connect. If you have launched an app in, or deployed an app, in the last, I don't know, a couple years, since I was 14, on the main page where you enter all your app metadata, you may have seen this little section that's there. Maybe you skipped over it, maybe you don't care. Uh, if you open that up, it says App Clip, uh, this is what you get. What you see here is a what's called a basic App Clip experience. All you have to do is drag a header image, they'll show you the size, in this case, 360 iDev logo, enter a subtitle and an action. An action can be, there's like three or four choices. It can be play if you have media. Um, in this case, open. We just want to open our app clip. This is all you need for a basic app clip experience. What does this get you? If you've ever seen a Safari app banner where you add a metadata to your website and you go to that website and you see an app and it, click that and it will link to your app store page, it gives you that but this will link to your app clip. But that's all it does. Everything else that we're gonna talk about is technically called an advanced experience, and that's, you click this blue button at the bottom to get to those. But you do need to fill this out, and then click the blue button at the bottom. And now I'll walk you through how to set up an advanced experience. The first thing you need to do is you need to specify your experience URL. Your experience URL is the 
URL that you are going to share out as your universal link. Now, if you use a QR code or something, maybe the user doesn't see it as a URL, but you certainly do. And you're going to enter in your <coughs> URL here. So in my, my case, appclip.covelop.org slash experience. Now, what I'm actually intending to do from a marketing perspective is have multiple app codes, app clip codes out in the wild, and each of them provide a different experience depending on which one you invoke. Apple doesn't need to know that. They just need to know the you, what they call the URL prefix, and that's what this experience URL is. So what my real intention is, is for my app codes to have appclip.covelop.org slash experience slash one, slash two, slash 50, whatever the ID means in my database, and I can put those URLs out in the wild, Apple just needs to know sort of this prefix URL or base URL so they can optimize for, for finding that. You'll notice the little green check mark. That means when I enter this URL, by the way, this is going to, via async JavaScript in the web, go out and spider your domain and look for that AASA file. And if your AASA file is incorrect, you will not be able, this will not pass. So if you get caught in that loop, go to the validator, figure out your problems there on your domain, and keep entering this until you get the green check. When you add your build to your app release, uh, you will see, this is the, the parent build, and you'll see this domain status over on the right. Notice that uh, when you build your project, your app clip target is bundled in, and so the app store knows, it says has app clip, it knows that there's an app clip inside, and the domain status needs to be checked green for this all to work. The view status will show you if it's being cached or Apple hasn't you know, validated it yet, so all this needs to be green. Then you're allowed to continue in the advanced app clip experience generator, and they give you this really cool WYSIWYG, which will help you configure the app, app clip card which you saw in the examples come up first. All you do is drag an image in, fill out the subtitle again, same thing you did for the basic experience, there's a couple other parameters, and it will show you in real time what your card is going to look like. And then you click next and it sends off, you get this confirmation. I guess Apple actually reviews this just to make sure you're not doing anything profane in your card image or something. Uh, I guess that's part of the review process, but that's it. You just hit OK. Cool. That's it. We've set up our App Clip experience on App Store Connect. Now let's talk about App Clip invocations. Invocation, these are ways in which users will launch your App Clip. Safari App Banner, QR codes, universal links, iMessage, location verified, NFC tags, AR. I'm going to go through all these in a little more detail. And I'm gonna call out some gotchas with each one. So let's talk about Safari App Banner first. You may have recognized this because basic app clip experiences uh, tend to be out there more often. If you look at the, the big image on the left, there's two uh, phones there, this is straight out of the docs. On the left image, you will see the banner at the top. That is the app clip banner. Again, this is Safari, so someone just typed in your URL or you had a link in email or something and they clicked it and they opened it up. You will have a, if you put a meta tag in your web page, that banner will show up. They click the open button and the second screen shows the card and how it looks on Safari. It covers most of your view there. It's got the app clip image and it gives you two buttons. One is view in Safari and one is open app clip. The gotchas here are that this card can be confusing to users, at least in our experience. Many users, because they don't know what an app clip is, they don't know what that button is supposed to do, and they kind of run to the view in Safari because it feels less risky. The interesting thing here is that if you click, by the way, this only works, this does not work if private browsing is enabled. That's another gotcha. But if you click view in Safari, it will take you to your web page. Let's say you come back to this and they, you, they, they click on your link again and come back here. They will never see this card again. 
Once they've clicked view in Safari, you will never have an opportunity to, sh to show their car and show the app clip again. Uh, Apple's reasoning is that they take your intent as view in Safari means I do not want to open an app clip. And I think most people just don't know what that button is, so they click Safari. So this is sort of a point of contention that we found. And the only way you can unset that state, it's some OS cookie, is actually go into settings Safari and clear your entire history and website data, which I don't think any user is going to do um, because of this. So this one I don't necessarily recommend, but you will see this very often. It's probably the easiest to implement. A universal link, it's just a link to your experience URL that you send. This can be in a button in another app. It can be a native open, you know, open URL button, doesn't matter. Uh, this is super convenient, works like any other universal link. The gotchas are that it only works if the user opens up in mobile Safari. In reality, users have lots of other default browsers like Chrome and Firefox, and if they click your link and they go to Chrome or Firefox, they will not see the banner, nothing will happen, this is Apple specific. So you are responsible for maybe detecting that and pointing them somewhere else, you get creative with that. Just know that that's a reality. iMessage, if you text someone your app clip experience URL, and if you have gone through the trouble on your domain to add meta tags to implement uh, link previews, you'll get this rich sort of display inside of iMessage where the card will display, and then they can click and open it, and that will pop up the app clip directly in iMessage. Again, if you're sending this out to Android users, you may want to have an instant app experience. Location. So this is to constrain the invocation to a particular location. So an example is uh, a coffee shop is going to run a special coupon promo, and they don't want uh, just anybody to be able to redeem this, only when they're within a certain radius of your coffee shop. Or if you were to put an app clip code on a billboard somewhere, you might want people who are in, you know, within one mile radius to be able to invoke this, but if someone takes a picture of this and goes back to Toledo and they scan their picture, you don't necessarily want them to participate in this experience. So you can double check the user's location uh, and you can constrain the invocation that way. NFC tag. So uh, here, these are little cards. You can get an NFC card, put your URL on that, phones will react to that, or more likely you might have real hardware where a user brings their phone to your hardware and it pops up an app clip. And then this, again, I think is super interesting. This was introduced in iOS 14.5, AR and VR markers where you have a app code somewhere in your experience and instead of launching out to an app clip, you can actually load a 3D model as the invocation. I personally think this is going to get very interesting in the next year or so when you combine all these things together with maps and AR markers and experiences uh, in the virtual world. And then QR codes slash app clip codes, this is probably the most common way besides Safari. And I'm gonna go in and show you how to generate these. So you can generate your own QR code as you saw in the name tag example. In the name tag example, every time you log into House Tonight, our SDK generates a new QR code. So it's a one-time use QR code that is invalid if you go come back to the same QR code. So you can do that, or you can use Apple's app code generator, which I'll show you. And you should mine the HIG if you use the app code generator. There is a specific HIG just for how these app clip codes should be displayed. And to do that, go back into App Store Connect. You've already registered your advanced app clip experience. You'll have a list of them there. Uh, select that. And this will walk you through how to generate the code. You can select color pat patterns. You can enter in your own hex values, but they won't let you pick something that is not uh, a proper contrast ratio. In this case, I've selected blue, 360 blue, and it shows you your preview. After you select this, it's going to download an SVG. So you're gonna have this SVG package or file that is this scalable app clip 
uh, code that you can print, again, mine the HIG, or do whatever, whatever you want with. Now let's look at how to handle universal links if you haven't done that before. I'm showing you a super bare bones example. One thing that's interesting here about app clip specific stuff is you remember when we first set up the target, there was, it asked us to activate the scheme. Well, one of the settings that comes pre-built in in that scheme is this XC app clip URL environmental variable. You don't have to use it, you can remove it, but go in and just add your experience URL into the value and as a developer, this will be the way that you can basically just really quickly build and it will automatically invoke the app clip and pass this URL along to your app. So in this case, I've put appclip.covelop.org slash experience slash one because that's what I'm in intending to come in. That's what I'm gonna develop with. And this is really all there is, this one slide. I just wanna show you how easy it is. This is obviously bare bones Swift UI version. Um, I have my main file there. Again, this is the clip target. It has its own main file, just like any other uh, app would. All you have to do is implement on continue user activity with type browsing web, and you will get a user activity back. Inside that user activity is a web page URL. And in this case, I'm just printing it. And if you look down at the console, you'll see what it's printing. So that URL that I had in the XC app clip URL in my scheme is what's getting passed through every time I build my app clip target. Now it's totally up to you what you do after this. So I mentioned that I want to have different experiences depending on which parameter is passed in. And so in this case it's one, so you could just do a switch statement and go out to a database or whatever, whatever you want to do to change the user experience, but that's how you're going to get additional parameters passed in. And you just have to parse, you know, parse the URL with URL components, that kind of thing. One gotcha about this. Never assume that a user will see your app clip. I know this sounds silly after going this deep in it, but this is, this is a big deal. One interesting thing about app clips is that when you can send a user to your app clip forever until they download your parent app or your main app. After they install your parent or your main app, if that is on their phone, when they go through the same exact invocation process, it will launch your app, not your app clip. They will never see the app clip again. So if you're using app clips as a funnel to get people to install your app, well, that's great. But if for some reason, you know, you can't ship an app clip on its own, it has to be bundled with another app. So just know that you don't know if they're gonna open this in an app clip or your parent app. So you need to implement your invocation requests on both your app clip target and your parent app. That means uh, setting up associated domains in both targets and handling some sort of, you don't have to have an identical experience. You just have to know that a user might be invoking your main app uh, with the same invocation method. One more thing is you can do ephemeral notifications. So because the user is not entering through your main app, they're not going through the same registration flow uh, for notifications. They're not opting in to be notified. They're not doing that. But what Apple does give you for an app clip specifically is they give you eight hours, an eight hour window to message, to send notifications uh, to your user from an app clip. So something like you're doing a regis user registration in your app clip, you can tell from tracking data that they get all the way to the end and they don't complete. Well, you have an eight hour window to sort of send a follow up or a e-commerce checkout. They get all the way to the end, but they don't buy. You've got eight hours to sort of send them a nudge and that notification you send, because they don't have the app installed, when you click the notification, it will re-invoke your app clip and bring your app clip to the foreground. It's important to know that app clips don't sit in your, your, your phone's home screen like a normal app would. So they're not gonna go back and find this app clip. So you may need to re-invoke it with a notification. It will get recommended to you as a recent, like in your app library, there'll be an app clip with like a dotted border, but it's not gonna be obvious where someone downloaded. Even if you had a completely clean 
home screen, you wouldn't see the app clip there. It is in your active windows. So you can swipe it up, or if you go to your, you swipe up, you can see that your app clip will still be there as well. And then one more thing you might want to think of is migrating a user from an app clip to a parent app. If that's your funnel, you can put a lot of thought process into this flow. So I mentioned the App Store banner. This is really, really cool. Um, it's technically in store kit. It's SK app banner overlay. And this is from the name tag app. After I logged into House Tonight, you see this banner. And if I were to click the logo, that would take me to the App Store page. But if I click the, the cloud, I've obviously installed name tag before, so if I had never installed name tag before, it would just show me an install button. And I can click that, and it downloads my parent app directly in this banner asynchronously without leaving the app clip. Really cool. Now it doesn't take me to the app store. If I click the logo, though, it does. And one strategy you might want to take when you are migrating a user uh, from an app clip to uh, your parent app is let's say again registration. They register a user account in their app clip, but then they swipe the app clip away and they don't end up installing your main app for a couple months. Well, like, are you gonna know who that user is? How are you gonna handle that? So one recommended way to, is create a shared app container or an app group between your parent and your app clip. And then do your processing on the app clip and then just write to, let's say, user defaults with just some sort of non-personal information with a key like, you know, app clip ID or app clip user ID or something like that. Something that you would not, you know, violate their privacy. And it'll sit in user defaults. Again, it's app group. So it will be, so it will be retained. If you can get that user to then download your main app, even if it's, uh, three weeks later, on startup, just check for that key, and if that key exists, go to your database and hydrate that user's account with all the information you already have about them. Uh, yes, no, let's see. This may be interesting. I don't know if I can play this in line. Might be risking it. I just wanted to show this. Doesn't, this is what the the app banner looks like. So you can see I'm clicking, I click the download, I get a, it downloaded, I click open, and then I click open and it opens up my parent app, the main app. Really slick, doesn't have to go to the app store. Okay, we're all developers, I wanna talk about testing. There's some gotchas and some interesting approaches here. There's three main approaches when testing your app clip. Local experiences, great for developers, you're gonna use this. Test flight, this is better for stakeholders, and clip size reports to sort of keep an eye on how big or bloated your app clip is getting during development. Local experiences. Another gotcha. Remember we created our app code file. I said you download an SVG. Well, that on its own doesn't work. As a developer, this will not work, the app code will not work until you've published your app. So just creating that thing doesn't help you much as a developer. And I will show you, can I? Okay, so after I, after I downloaded the, the app code, I point my phone at it, no usable data found. Wow, that's a bummer. Did I do something wrong? Did I enter in the experience URL wrong? No, they just don't work until you've published. Okay, so how do you handle that? How do you even see that everything is working? Well, local experiences. So as developers, we have this developer app, after you've deployed an app from Xcode to your phone, to your test device, go to settings, developer, there's an app clips testing section, click local experiences, register a local experience, and then fill out the form. You're gonna enter your URL prefix, 
your bundle ID to your clip, and then just fill out the other data. In this case, I'm just uploading an image I took of my slides. It doesn't have to be identical. Ideally, this would be the 360 dev logo that, that we entered in our Apple experience, but you don't have to. Now, after I've done that, it's all I had to do. Let me now show you. Now I point my phone at the same SVG file. And now it says my local experience. And I click that, I get the app clip card, I click open, and now it launches my target directly. And I can see that. I specifically used a different image than what we added in App Store Connect to drive home the point that local experiences are completely local. Apple knows nothing about them. They are only for you as a developer to trigger that flow, okay? Test flight, so obviously local experiences are not gonna work for your stakeholders. They don't have the developer app installed. They don't have local experiences. So test flight, on the right you see my Covelop app clip example, that is my parent app. And then if your app clip is bundled, you will get a section below it that actually links directly to your app clip. So a stakeholder can go to test flight, and as long as they have not installed the main app, they will be able to install and open the app clip directly. The big gotcha here is that this flow just opens up the app clip experience and does not show you the card. So to a stakeholder like a product manager or a CEO, you wanna show them the whole experience? You can't. It's kind of a gotcha here. Um, please join me in filing feedback about this. Your best bet is to just sort of take a video of what the card looks like, and they sort of have to just trust you until this goes live. In production, obviously, it will generate the card first and go, but it's, it's very hard to test like a staging environment and a QA person to confirm that everything works exactly as it's supposed to. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is app thinning size reports. Okay, this is really how you're going to make sure you're under budget. Get your distribution, make a distribution archive of your app clip target, or maybe your main app. No, just your app clip target. Make a distribution archive, follow the prompts, and when you get to this page, select all compatible device variants. You can certainly do it for one device, but just go ahead and do all. Okay, this is just an archive. Save it to your desktop, and in the package in the bundle there is going to be this app thinning size report.txt. And that is going to show you every possible hardware device and OS version and how big your app clip target actually is for those devices. If you're familiar with app thinning, app thinning provides some magic wand that can reduce the size of your binary size. And so you want to look at the uncompressed and then the thinned binary. This is one part of the actual app thinning size report from Nametag, the experience I showed you. Now that experience I showed you is doing a lot in that app clip. We are using vision to do face detection, object detection, barcode scanning, pitch roll and yaw of your face to get to auto take a selfie. We're doing brightness, all kinds of things. We're taking depth maps of your face to make sure that you are a 3D human and not a piece of paper. We're doing a lot. And this is the actual size report. Uncompressed, 5.7 megabytes. Compressed, 2.3 megabytes. So if you use Apple frameworks to do what you need to do, you're gonna have plenty of space. 10 megabytes is plenty. But you might need to reconsider using third-party frameworks that you're bringing in if those are if you bring in a 50 megabyte third-party framework, that gets compiled in, that's, you're gonna blow your budget. So lean on Apple to do everything you can do, and you can do lots. Are you inspired now? Yes. I have a GitHub app clip example. It is so bare bones. It's basically just what you saw with the uh, printing out the universal link. 
so you can handle the universal link. And the target is set up correctly, so if you need to go in and just compare your uh, Xcode project to mine, this will just get you up in the very bare bones. Feel free to grab that. And if there's any questions, amazingly, we have a couple minutes. And if not, you can find me on Twitter or talk to me here. Yes. That's a great question. I, I haven't done that yet, but that is a great question. I don't know. I, hmm, I don't know. I'm going to guess, and this may or may not be true. I'm going to guess that it either will not pass validation if you've included uh, iOS 15 and below, or your app clip will not be available. I don't know. I'm guessing it may not pass validation. I'm not even sure you could upload it into App Store Connect to be honest, because all that gets validated. There is a, if you go through your test flight build and go into the details of your test flight build, it shows you all kinds of metadata. It will show your app clip as well, and it's, it's part of the same bundle. So I'm guessing that it won't get that far. Or the API as you're submitting might flag it. I don't know. It's a great question. Yes? Another great question. I don't know exactly how Apple targets your app clip for those notifications. The user does not, I don't have it in my example. I'll have to check. I don't remember if a user actually opts in. I believe you, the user does not have to opt in for that notification. I could be wrong on this. Um, it's actually, the, the disclaimer is in the app clip card if you've enabled that but you will definitely need to figure out if that blows your budget. We're able to do it. I guess we're doing our notifications like the hard way, so to speak, APNS. Yes. I'm sorry, what? In our, in our cases, it just gets bundled in We've never gotten flagged on our app clip, so I don't know. Um, we, we certainly give instructions to the reviewer on how to trigger it. I don't know how rigorous they are in testing the invocations. I don't know. I've never been flagged for it. I think you should probably document how that works for, for them. There's some automated checks, I think, on binary size and other things, but I'm not, I've never been flagged for just the app clip experience. Any other questions? Yeah? <clears throat> right, so let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not repeating the questions. Huh. The question is, do I have any anecdotal evidence on install rates between the app clip and the parent app? Ah, conversion rates. Got it. Our particular app, we don't rely on the funnel, so we're not comparing that. <clears throat> you can generate this, you can have the same sort of login experience in the main app. So we can tell how people are using both, but we don't, it's not a measure of success for us, if that makes sense. So I go back to remember that you can do no networking in the background of your app clip. So as you are measuring that, take that into account that if you have logging and, and uh, statistics analytics frameworks that you assume are posting in the background, let's say, remember that they're gonna get paused as soon as it goes to the background. So make sure that any hand-rolled analytics is posting when it comes back to the foreground. There is an app life cycle, so on a peer and all those things work as normal for the app clip. But my, my point is you could totally track that 
And also, um, one of the talks here was about the metric kit. And I looked last night, because, oh, metric kit, this is cool. Our app didn't show up in there, and I wasn't sure if that's something I need to do, but it's separated as a different target. So if I go into metrics, metric kit, uh, the in Xcode, the organizer, and I, you can it'll show your main target and your app clip target. So if you're generating metric kit data, Apple will actually show you some of that data separated between the clip target and the main app, if that helps. Anything else? Cool. Thank you so much. I'll be on Slack or see me around. Thanks.